normal phenomenon uh, from South Africa to Brazil to Western Europe to China places like this and I've lectured too but I've spent most of my life in Los Angeles and I've grown to know the city especially some parts of it and I've encountered a very interesting phenomena which could be called paranormal of course and uh, I'll tell you some of my experiences and maybe point people to certain areas of this great city because it is a fascinating city and uh, I've already mentioned some of the interesting areas in my opinion such as Hawthorne but I also want to turn your attention to the downtown area back in 1984 I worked in the downtown area and I am a curious person so I asked questions and I knew somebody at the time who was an elevator mechanic an experienced one and uh, he was uh, about 50 years old at the time I would say back in 1984 he worked extensively in the Los Angeles area and he knew the underground area of Los Angeles quite well and I'm specifically referring to the tunnels those who have studied paranormal Los Angeles or just unusual Los Angeles know about the tunnels that have existed in our city that have been built up whether by uh, official government entities or private enterprises and by the unofficial ones such as the underworld uh, in the 1920s also in the 1920s the Pacific Red Car had some tunnels built have been abandoned since then and um, I believe there are about 270 tunnels that we know about and about 11 miles altogether underground there are some in the bunker hill area some in the other parts of uh, the Los Angeles the mechanic that uh, I refer to told me that once he was sent to the uh, one of the you know long abandoned tunnels to uh, do a special project probably with the old elevator equipment and he chanced into a side tunnel tunnel by but just by sheer chance when he was down below he told me about the eerie feeling that he had when he was working down below and when he did go into the side tunnel he told me about the footprints that he had observed made by a bipedal being but not being human enough he was not an uneducated person he knew what he was speaking about and he told me about the strange feeling that came over him and the fear that he experienced he felt that something was watching him I believe he never went back to that tunnel again but he told me a few other stories and uh, that of course uh, caught my attention and I've collected as much as I can about the abandoned tunnels in Los Angeles I know there are people who study this phenomenon and uh, they would know much more but I didn't want to bring your attention to this story and I didn't want it to go forgotten of course we uh, those who study paranormal Los Angeles know about the 1934 story of the lizard so-called lizard city under the downtown area of Los Angeles and the old Hopi uh, Arizona legends when I went to college Cal State Northridge by the way I have found an old ma book uh, it was very interesting it contained legends uh, from the Indians uh, from the Native Americans from uh, California and some other states very interesting and I was amazed to find confirmation of the um, let's call it ancient alien stories that I had uh, read about in the writings of the Russian uh, writers specializing in such uh, research we had uh, a few of them in uh, the former Soviet Union and I'll talk about it later so I wanted to bring your attention also to the stories uh, of the Hopi Indians and the information they gave to Schufeld, the person who was uh, 
in charge of the prog uh, project uh, to look for the abandoned lizard city under Los Angeles. The whole story to me was very interesting because of the time period uh, where allegedly the catastrophe took place and uh, uh, the fires engulfed and uh, uh, destroyed uh, civilization and um, people who were saved in the underground cities and how they protect them themselves. If you don't know this story, you should look it up. And maybe one day I'll tell what I know about it. But there, is a, there, there are enough sources. Otherwise, I wanted to bring your attention to three other areas of Los Angeles, and I want to do it uh, in this fashion. Little Tokyo is another part of the downtown Los Angeles. I've spent some years working there. I love the culture. I've learned to know the Japanese customs and made very good friends. Well, when I worked in Little Tokyo, I have to tell you that the paranormal phenomenon was quite present there. You just had to know what to look for and what to ask for. So if you are on the streets of Little Tokyo sometimes late evening, you can see some of the stories, or I should say, creatures that would be found in Japanese tales or those who pretend to be such. Just, it's a different part of Los Angeles than it used to be before the Little Tokyo. And uh, if you are curious enough, you will see and understand what I'm talking about. Also, keep in mind that at the time when I worked in that part of town, the LAPD used to have special units there, too. And I think they had persons or police people who were doing investigations and might have seen much more than I have. It's just to keep an eye uh, on that. It's a wonderful part of town. And if you ever want to learn about old Japan, you will. There are some other areas in Los Angeles that I found to be very interesting. One of them actually is in Tarzana, and uh, it's Collins Street. In Tarzana, the stretch from Etiwanda to Reseda Boulevard. I don't want to tell you what part of the street exactly, but there are stories of those who had experienced it, of what I would call rupture of the time space continuum somebody steps on a sidewalk in Tarzana and finds himself or herself somewhere else this was very interesting and I think it happened more than once there are also other interesting details connected with Collins Street I'm sure there are other areas of Los Angeles that would contain similar phenomena. It's just you have to ask questions and know what to look for. For example, Encino. There are there are a number of stories about uh, strange, unusual, let's say, beings sighted in the hills of Encino. Also, I heard a report, very detailed report of a gigantic cigar-shaped UFO that had been uh, observed over Encino. I would say back in early 1980s. And the same person who told me that story, by the way, mentioned his neighbor who was a retired U.S. admiral who had seen quite a lot while serving in the U.S. military, in the Navy, especially the so-called USOs, which is uh, one of the focus of my research, unidentified submersible objects. But you see, he would not talk about it, that U.S. Admiral, uh, because of the uh, oath that he had given. That's the excuse he, he gave. But he told my acquaintance a number of interesting stories. Encino is also uh, the area of the so-called apparitions, if, if I can call that phenomena correctly, because that's not my focus of research. But I knew somebody who had reported that uh, when they were in an apartment, all of a sudden a human being appeared out of nowhere and walked, walked across 
that apartment and vanished again. Also, there were stories about um, beings that were seen in the hills of Encino appearing from nowhere and disappearing somewhere else. Hawthorne, I already mentioned uh, before in my presentation, but I do want to call people's attention back to that town, uh, those who are interested in paranormal phenomena. And if they ask questions, they'll know, they'll find out much more. So I'll leave it, uh, I'll leave uh, tonight at this, and I do want to mention that I'd like to speak about Brazil in my future presentation, because it's one of the most interesting countries in terms of the paranormal phenomena, and I'll share you some of my research. Thank you, and good night. Of the, um, let's call it ancient alien stories that I had uh, read about in the writings of the Russian uh, writers specializing in such uh, research. We had uh, a few of them in uh, the former Soviet Union, and I'll talk about it later. So I wanted to bring your attention also to the stories uh, of the Hopi Indians and the information they gave to Schufeld, um, the person who was uh, in charge of the prog uh, project uh, to look for the abandoned lizard city under Los Angeles. The whole story to me was very interesting because of the time period uh, where allegedly the catastrophe took place and um, uh, the fires engulfed and uh, destroyed uh, civilization and um, people who were saved in the underground cities and how they protect them themselves. If you don't know this story, you should look it up. And maybe one day I'll tell what I know about it. But there, is a, there, there are enough sources. Otherwise, I wanted to bring your attention to three other areas of Los Angeles, and I want to do it uh, in this fashion. Little Tokyo is another part of the downtown Los Angeles. I've spent some years working there. I love the culture. I've learned to know the Japanese customs and made very good friends. Well, when I worked in Little Tokyo, I have to tell you that the paranormal phenomenon was quite present there. You just had to know what to look for and what to ask for. So if you are on the streets of Little Tokyo sometimes late evening, you can see some of the stories, or I should say, creatures that would be found in Japanese tales or those who pretend to be such. Just, it's a different part of Los Angeles than it used to be before the Little Tokyo. And uh, if you are curious enough, you will see and understand what I'm talking about. Also, keep in mind that at the time when I worked in that part of town, the LAPD used to have special units there, too. And I think they had persons or police people who were doing investigations and might have seen much more than I have. It's just to keep an eye uh, on that. It's a wonderful part of town. And if you ever want to learn about old Japan, you will. There are some other areas in Los Angeles and understand what I'm talking about. Also, keep in mind that at the time when I worked in that part of town, the LAPD used to have special units there, too. And I think they had persons or police people who were doing investigations and might have seen much more than I have. It's just to keep an eye uh, on that. It's a wonderful part of town. And if you ever want to learn about old Japan, you will. There are some other areas in Los Angeles that I found to be very interesting. One of them actually is in Tarzana. And uh, it's Collins Street in Tarzana, the stretch from Etiwanda to Reseda Boulevard. I don't want to tell you what part of the street exactly, but there are stories of those who had experienced it of what I would call rupture of the time space 
continuum somebody steps on a sidewalk in Tarzana and finds himself or herself somewhere else this was very interesting and I think it happened more than once there are also other interesting details connected with Collins Street I am sure there are other areas of Los Angeles that would contain similar phenomena it's just you have to ask questions and know what to look for for example Encino there are there are a number of stories about uh, strange unusual let's say beings sighted in the hills of Encino also I heard a report very detailed report of a gigantic cigar shaped UFO that had been uh, observed over Encino I would say back in early 1980s and the same person who told me that story by the way mentioned his neighbor who was a retired US admiral who had seen quite a lot while serving in the US military in the Navy especially the so-called USOs which is uh, one of the focus of my research unidentified submersible objects but you see he could not talk about it that US admiral uh, because of the uh, oath that he had given that's the excuse he he gave but he told my acquaintance a number of interesting stories Encino is also uh, the area of the so-called apparitions if if I can call that phenomena correctly because that's not my focus of research but I knew somebody who had three times late evening you can see some of the stories or I should say creatures that would be found in Japanese tales or those who pretend to be such just it's a different part of Los Angeles than it used to be before the little Tokyo and uh, if you are curious enough you will see and understand what I'm talking about also keep in mind that at the time when I worked in that part of town the LAPD used to have special units there too and I think they had persons or police people who were doing investigations and might have seen much more than I have it's just to keep an eye uh, on that it's a wonderful part of town and if you ever want to learn about old Japan you will there are some other areas in Los Angeles that I found to be very interesting one of them actually is in Tarzana and uh, it's Collins Street in Tarzana the stretch from Etiwanda to Reseda Boulevard I don't want to tell you what part of the street exactly but there are stories of those who had experienced it of what I would call rupture of the time space continuum somebody steps on a sidewalk in Tarzana and finds himself or herself somewhere else this was very interesting and I think it happened more than once there are also other interesting details connected with Collins Street I am sure there are other areas of Los Angeles that would contain similar phenomena it's just you have to ask questions and know what to look for for example Encino there are there are a number of stories about uh, strange unusual let's say beings sighted in the hills of Encino also I heard a report very detailed report of a gigantic cigar shaped UFO that had been uh, observed over Encino I would say back in early 1980s and the same person who told me that story by the way mentioned his neighbor who was a retired US admiral who had seen quite a lot while serving in the US military in the Navy especially the so-called USOs which is uh, one of the focus of my research unidentified